right. It's good to see everybody here this morning. Uh, you're in your father's house, right? Yeah. Amen. And so we uh, want to welcome everybody this morning, and uh, uh, we always like to welcome our guests. We hope you'll feel at home here. Um, well, as some, uh, some of us say, we'll treat you so many ways, you're bound to like one of them. <laughs> so, uh, but you know what I really like to do is I'd like for us to welcome the guest of honor today. How about that? You all want to do that? Let's give him a hand clap of praise right off. Hey, welcome, Jesus. Welcome into the house, Jesus. Amen. Um, so uh, how many of you have um, ever been in a restaurant and, uh, and, and the, the staff there, you know, the hostess, maybe the servers and the cooks, they come all out and somebody at the table, it's their birthday. And they come out and they sing happy birthday to you, right? Anybody ever had done that? Maybe even got to wear the silly hat, right? <laughs> and what happens whenever they start singing that song? Say, so, well, everybody at the table starts singing, don't they? And, and I've even seen sometimes where, and I'm probably guilty of it, you know, even the birthday person starts singing to themselves, right? <laughs> Happy birthday to me, right? <laughs> so, uh, but you think about some other occasions that are similar to that. I think about Christmas when I was growing up. My grandmother, Newcomb, she was, uh, she loved music. She, she played piano in her church all her life, I think, since she was this big. And, uh, but she always would have these little gummy or gumdrops, I guess is what they were, and she'd put a candle in the middle of it, in the top. She'd light it, and then she'd put a little lifesaver on the end of it for a little handle, and we'd pretend like it was these little, uh, you know, lanterns kind of thing. And, uh, and then we'd start singing. She might sing, Silent Night. You know, and she'd start singing, and us kids would start singing. She was teaching us the songs. And, and then before you know it, guess who else was started singing? Well, she was singing, but the mamas and the daddies started singing. You know, they started singing along too, right? So I'll give you another example in the Bible. Jesus is uh, at, his, at the Last Supper, and we're, we're familiar with this portion of Scripture when Jesus tells, uh, tells them, you know, this is, take this bread and eat of my body. You know, we've heard that through the communion. And then he also says, you know, take this drink. This is my blood. And then after he gets through with this portion of the dinner, in Matthew, this is, comes from Matthew, uh, I think it's chapter 26. In verse 30 it says, then they sang a hymn. They sang a song. And, I, you know, I've heard that scripture all my life, and I don't think I've ever recognized or saw where Jesus and the disciples sang together in that moment. And so the idea behind all this is, is, is what I see is, is that singing like that brings unity, right? From the happy birthday song, those people come out, we don't even know them, but they get us singing, don't they? And the Christmas songs, they get our children singing, they get us singing, and it makes us feel good because we're starting to be unified, right? We came in here this morning as a unified body of Christ, right? So that means that we need to sing for each other, right? Because what does the Bible say, Mike Smith, about what, what happens whenever uh, one or two or more of us? Jesus is in the midst. And so if we're sincere about welcoming, you know, bringing, making him feel welcome this morning and coming into our service this morning, and we truly want to treat him like a guest of honor, guess what we need to do? We need to sing, don't we, Donna? That's right. So we're going to give you an opportunity. And I'll just mention, too, that it'll be a little different this morning. It's going to sound a little different to you. Uh, well, Junior had uh, something happen. We, I'd like for you all to just pray for him. Uh, hopefully he'll be back next week. But uh, for today, he's out. And so uh, we're going to miss him for sure. So it'll be a little bit different sound than what you're normally used to hearing. But that's okay. Because you know what? You can sing without any instruments. You can sing without, you know, without all these electrical things. We can still sing. They did it in the old days. We can do it today, right? So we're going to need your help this morning. So we're depending on you to join us, and let's get unified, and let's sing out to Jesus Christ, and let's welcome him in this morning. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for each and every one that came today, God. And, and we came through these doors expecting something, Lord. We, we came expecting to get to meet you today. And we, we, we have things in our lives that we, we ask for you to touch. And, and, God, we just when we come in, we, we share our vulnerabilities with you, Lord God, because we know that you're the strong and you're the mighty, and we know in our weakness you, you shine strong. 
And, God, we just want to place our faith in you this morning. We want to sing out to you this morning, Lord God, because we invite you in this morning, God, because we want you to, to feel welcome here, too, as an honored guest today. So, Lord Jesus, we just thank you for all you say, all you do, all you teach, all you lead, and everything that you do for us, God. We just thank you, and it's in the name of Jesus. Amen. Stand with us in worship this morning. How many of you know Jesus is a chain breaker? I can raise my hand and say that. I think y'all know this one. Help sing it with us. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, if you've been hearing the same old voice and the same old lies, if you're trying to feel the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom to save it, he's a prison shaking savior. You got chains, he's a chain breaker. Yes, hallelujah. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. We've all run to things we know that just ain't right. There's a better life. Oh, there's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. You got chains, he's a chain breaker. Yes, he is. Y'all believe that this morning? If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. Come on, church. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. You got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom and saving, he's a prison shaking savior. You got chains, he's a chain breaker. Whoa, if you need freedom and saving, he's a prison shaking savior. You got chains, he's a chain breaker. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Give him praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.
This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Do you get that? Saying it with me. This is the air I breathe. More voices than music. This is the air I breathe. One more time. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence is living in me. We're here to hear his word today. This is my daily bread. Yes, it is, Lord. This is my daily bread. Your very word is spoken to me. And I Praise the Lord. Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Hey, y'all did a great job. Appreciate you. Amen. They did well. Yeah, Junior tried to cut his hand first, you know, with a razor knife and stuck it in his hand so he couldn't play. That didn't really get him out of it, so then he decided to jump off of a trailer and Spraying his ankle and fracture his foot. So, you know, yeah. all in the same week. Hey, you know. Hey, Ken, don't let me forget, you have a distortion too and the guitar. We'll have to figure that out. It was too much distortion. Now, nah, you, 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 ain't, you ain't with me on it. We'll get there. We'll get there. Hey, Amen. Yeah, it did sound good. But when I got right there, I could hear it. And see, a lot of times you can hear on live stream what you can't hear here live. And I, I, I go crazy over that. Jerry goes crazy over that. That's what we do. <laughs> Amen. Listen, check it out. Yesterday, man, 21 people showed up for a church work day. We had an awesome, awesome day. Accomplished a lot of great things. I appreciate everyone that showed up and uh, put their hands to the work. Very grateful. Amen. And uh, understanding, you know, it's all about God, uh, really. And you'd say, well, man, how is that? Because we're representing him. And when somebody pulls in our, someone pulls in our parking lot, it makes a difference where we're at and what's going on and what we look like. And it was getting pretty bad in some areas. So, uh, man, I am so grateful for everyone that uh, helped with that. I wanted to make sure that I said that. Uh, Continue to pray for Brother David. Amen. Good to see him in the house today. Uh, he had a major surgery. Yeah. I, let's do it after I preach. Can I do that? All right. Thank you. Um, the uh, Also, uh, 
Jeff and Donna Bridges uh, have not been in the church or anything, so don't freak out. But they uh, both have been diagnosed with COVID. First, Donna went to the, and I shot it out on Facebook for everybody to pray because it was pretty important. I don't do that. I don't shoot nobody's name out on Facebook for someone to pray. But uh, Donna went to the hospital first because of COVID, and uh, Jeff seemed to be on the mend. And then Jamie went over there yesterday and ended up taking his daddy to the hospital also. And when he was uh, getting his daddy admitted, he found out his mama was being moved to ICU. So I'm really saying, that's why I'm like, nah, we're going we gonna to pray. I'm going to go ahead and put this out there so I can get a lot of people praying at one time. We need to bombard heaven. Uh, old song we used to sing, prayer bells of heaven, oh, how sweetly they ring, you know. And, uh, but uh, sometimes you just have to ring the prayer bells of heaven and, you know, reach out in faith for other folks. And it was, I believe that was a, that is, it is a time to do that right now, okay, for, for that family. Um, so I appreciate your prayers for them. And if it was your family, I would, I would want us to do the same thing, you know, uh, pour the prayers on. And may they come up before God as a sweet-smelling savor. I am going to preach uh, a message that I preached many, many years ago. I was going to start a series on verses. And uh, my wife keeps urging me to wait one more week. And for the last three weeks, I've heard her tell me to preach this message. I'm like, I preached the message 25 years ago. I don't remember it. Right? I mean, you know, I've slept since then. And, uh, but I'm going to take an attempt at that message. And I have very little notes again, okay? That's, and so, uh, it's just you and me, though. That's, that's the thing, man. You have to kind of get comfortable uh, in the pulpit. And when you feel freedom here, you don't, you just do what you do. You know what I'm saying? That's the good thing about that relationship with God is knowing is he's got your back, one time I studied all week to teach a Sunday school class, and I did not have anything. You believe you can study a week and not have nothing? <laughs> you can. <laughs> and I, so I come in, I'm like, I don't have anything but Jesus. And, man, when we finished the class, they was like, wow, that was awesome, you know. And I'm like, thank you, Lord. That's when, because God wants you sometimes to know that it ain't you. It never was you, and it never will be you. It's him. It always has been him, and it always will be him. And he wants us to know that. Uh, because do you all know Paul received a thorn in the flesh? He besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from him. And he received a thorn in the flesh that he would not think of himself more highly than he ought to. That's why he received a thorn in the flesh. And God did not remove it from him. No, you, you're going to have this. We're going to make sure that you just don't think you better than you actually are. And sometimes, man, that's a great thing. Uh, and we have to accept. He learned to accept uh, where he was at. You ever heard anybody elaborate a little bit on that, what his thorn in the flesh was? Yeah, I know y'all. Some of y'all know because y'all have heard me through the years, I know. But his eyes... I went, in sixth grade, I went to school with a boy named Darren Black, and his eyes was just always kind of leaking, and he always had like, looked like sleep around his eyes. And uh, he, had, he went and got his tear ducts operated on in sixth grade. And, uh, but back then, they didn't have that. And Paul's would be so bad, it had like a stench to it or a smell. And he had to walk in and preach in a room full of people dealing with this issue but God put it on him so that he wouldn't think of himself more highly than he did and uh, that to me that's kind of amazing you know this is the guy he said uh, we don't come to you with enticing words of man's wisdom but we come to you with power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost that's what he said you know he said God's gonna move see sometimes in my restrictions or your restrictions God can still move in a major kind of way You'll say, but I got health issues. I can't pray for God to heal somebody. I'm dealing with my own issues. No, your job is to lay hands on them and pray for them. 
you know, that's what Paul did. He said, I don't come to you with enticing words and man's wisdom. And he had that. <laughs> but he said, I come to you with power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. I mean, you know where the power of God's at? It's in the, within the Spirit of God. God will reach out through his Spirit in you, amen, and do a work. And God wants to do that. Christ in you, the hope of glory. God wants to work through you. Through you. Yeah, but I'm messed up. God wants to work through you. But I got faults and fact God wants to work through you. All heaven is counting on you. All heaven is counting on you. I ought to just keep. All heaven is counting on you. I, we, man, it, we, we sit back and sometimes and don't, some, I, I think, don't give ourselves uh, enough credit to be able to do the work that God's called us to do. Y'all believe all heaven's counting? Not because I said it. Not because, do, not because I said it. Do you believe all heaven's counting on you? You really believe it? What scripture would that be? <laughs> I love messing with people, man. I mean, wh what, what makes me think that heaven is counting on me? Man, there's great prophets went before me and teachers, and you know what I'm saying, that's went before me, and you're telling me that heaven is counting on me. I'm telling you, heaven is counting on you. 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 Heaven is counting on you, absolutely. Hebrews chapter number 12. Man, and I'd like to go through 11 real quick and just like speed read it really quick. <laughs> and read about all the men of God and all they've done and all of that. I, I, I mean... Uh, I get psyched out on Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11 will make you, as a Christian, where you're ready to go bear hunting with a switch, with a hickory switch. I'm telling you right now. Hebrews 11 will light you up. <laughs> I mean, really, when you're, when you're young in the Lord and you're needing that passion and you're wanting passion, I, Hebrews 11 gives me passion every time. Uh, It, it, I'm going to read a minute because I, I, I just have to. Hebrews 11, now faith. Okay, faith. Faith is the substance. It's the tangible thing that you put your hand to. Amen. Uh, uh, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I can't see it, but I believe it anyway. I can't see God, but I trust him anyhow. I can't see my healing, but I trust God anyhow. I can't see my financial help, but I trust God anyhow. I can't see me uh, achieving a certain goal in life. Man, it looks like it's beyond me, but I'm going to believe it anyhow. Amen? Uh, it's the evidence of things not seen. By it, by what? By faith. The elders obtained a good report. The world was framed. Verse number three. By faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. Five, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Um, seven, by faith, Noah being warned of God. Uh, eight, by faith, when Abraham, when he was called out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whether he, he didn't even know where he was going. I mean, that's believing. I don't even know what direction. I, listen, I'm going to tell you what. But, but what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, I don't know. I, I came in church, and I got saved. I, I, I really don't even know what direction I'm going in. What I'm going to do is put one foot in front of the other. I'm going to move from faith to faith, and I'm going to move from grace to grace. And I'm just going to keep moving till God takes me where he wants to take me. I remember coming to church because I needed to get my life right, and I needed, 
to teach my children better and to teach my children right. I never planned on teaching a Sunday school class, but I put one foot in front of the other. I never planned on deacon, being on the deacon board, but I put one foot in front of the other. I never planned on being chairman of the deacon board, but I put one foot in front of the other. I never planned on being an associate pastor, but I put one foot in front of the other. I never planned on pastoring. That was the furthest thing from my mind. I'm the least. Amen. Among sinners, I'm chiefest, even Paul said. I'm least among you. And God's going to call you out anyway because you don't even know where you're going. You know God delivered you and God saved you and God brought you out and God ain't going to take you nowhere that he didn't plan for you to be. God ordained you and separated you and called you because he loves you. Amen. Amen. And he's still counting on you right now. You think God saved you just to sit where you're at? No way. Absolutely not. And now he goes through the halls of faith. Amen. And I've spoke on that before. You walk down a hall and there's many old movies. And there's a picture here and a picture here and a picture here and a picture here and a picture. It's got Noah. It's got Abraham. It's got Enoch. You know what I'm saying? It's got Samson. It's got Gideon. I mean, we walk down through there. And all these guys, as you walk down this hall, they're looking at you. <laughs> you look in the picture, and they're looking at you, and you hold your head down, and you look at... Uh, <laughs> that's Isaiah. Oh, Lord, they tried to saw him in half. <laughs> that's John. They, they plucked his eyes out and tried to boil him in oil. <laughs> <laughs> That's Peter looking at me, and he was crucified upside down, not being worthy. <laughs> That's David, and he slew giants, and they're looking at you. Amen. And that's Hebrews chapter number 11 as we walk down the hall. And he says, hold on, hold on, hold on. He said, wherefore or therefore in chapter number 12, that seeing, I see this. I see this hall that I'm walking down. I see all the patriarchs of old, and they're looking at me, and they know I've been redeemed. They know what, where I've been and who I've been. And they, uh, let me tell you something. This is one thing. Christ redeemed you from who uh, you were, but who you were he wants to use to help other people that's coming from where you were at. He wants to use you to bring them out. Amen. Amen. Wherefore, therefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Amen. What? That is a heavenly host of angels. Amen. That's just watching you from on high. Amen. To see you. Amen. Get anointed in a move for God. To see you witness to somebody. To see you be prepared. Amen. To work in someone's life. That God will change them. Amen. That's uh, these patriarchs of old that stood. Amen. That's been hungry. That's been full. That suffered shipwreck that's been through great uh, rockladon storms, a typhoon or a hurricane, amen, and still held the faith, still stayed aboard the ship, amen, in Acts, I believe, chapter number 28, when Paul and him suffered shipwreck, amen, when Elisha has to go out by the brook, I believe, uh, uh, amen, and wait for the ravens to come by and drop food down to him because there's a famine in the land, <laughs> Amen. These guys are looking at you and me in our air conditioning, in our uh, fine cars and fine homes and fine churches, amen, to, uh, uh, amen, be that man of God, that woman of God. Somebody say, I ain't got no sand in my pockets. We'll get there. I ain't got no sand in my pockets. See, I'm going to be real with you. I'd been to the beach years ago. I was down in this little old single-wide trailer, laying in the floor, reading and praying. And I reached over there and turned the radio on. And Credence Clearwater Revival came on. And God said, I ain't got no sand in my pockets. I'm like, that's what I'm preaching. I ain't got no sand in my pockets. That was about 25 years ago. Amen. See, and, and, and today, I've been down the road a lot further. 
I've been around a lot longer now. Amen. Should have done gave up. Should have done shut up. Should have done quit. But I ain't got no sand in my pockets. Ain't nothing going to stop me. Ain't nothing going to slow me down. Ain't nothing going to hinder me. Amen. I'm going to go on as long as this body here has the ability and capability to go on for God. We need to push it, amen, to its limits. Amen. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which do so easily beset us. Let us lay aside every weight. Everything that restricts you from serving God. That's where I come up with. I ain't got no sand in my pockets. They ain't nothing weighing me down. They ain't nothing going to slow me down. Amen. Your anointing. Amen. He said my anointing will even quicken your mortal flesh. Amen. So when your flesh feels like giving up, you feel like quitting. Uh, uh, or you uh, over there wrote about in the book of Timothy, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Uh, amen. When you're letting everything else amen weight you down and keep you from serving God let me man I'm just gonna be real with you amen one of these I don't care how cool you are I don't care what car you drive what house you live in how cool you was in school amen one day you're gonna walk before a holy and just uh, uh, God amen one of these days we're going to walk right before him that has all power in heaven and earth. Amen. He said, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Paul many times was, he would talk about running uh, races. I, I believe it was called the Isthmian Games or the games in Rome. And they had different theaters, but they had the big Roman theater. Amen. And he, he alludes to that. But he's talking about guys coming out in robes, you know, to run the race. But before they run the race, they had to take it off and lay it down because it would hinder them from running the race. Listen, I don't know what's hindering you from running the race for God. And let me tell you, it, it, it is not a 50-yard dash. It is not a 100-yard dash. It is a marathon. It is a cross-country run. I used to love to run hurdles when I was young. Amen, I really did. Uh, in fourth grade, I got to outrun Bobby Mazik. I really felt good on that. Amen. Uh, <laughs> And his foot just touched the top of the hurdle, and he looked back. That's the, that's the reason I won. Amen? Because we were stride for stride. Amen? But, but what I found out is the gospel race is, is not, amen, a sprint. Man, people get, on, get in, they get saved, they get fired up, and they, amen, they'll witness for a couple months, and then they fade out. Amen. Listen, heaven's counting on you. Heaven's not looking for you to fade out, but heaven's looking for you, amen, to keep on going. Those that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. It is a race of endurance, amen. Uh, you have to endure, amen. Uh, you got battles from without, battles within, amen, but you keep on going anyway. Somebody said, well, he ain't good enough. She ain't good enough. They will not be doing this. They shouldn't do that. They shouldn't say this. They sh Man, I'm anointed. What you talking about? I'm better. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I, I might be messed up. I might have problems. You know, listen, you didn't knock on my door. The preacher didn't knock on my door. A deacon didn't knock on my door. God come. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man will hear my voice and open up his heart's door, me and my father will come in and we will sup with him. Revelation chapter number 3. Who knocked on your door? Amen. He said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. 
And after that, I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know why? David said that. He said, because God got two hound dogs. Amen. Goodness and mercy. And when they track you down, amen, they bloodhounds. Amen. They coming after you. When they track you down, amen, and you give your heart to God, then you say, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever because God tracked me down, knocked on my door. Lord have mercy. Amen. God don't want to track you down. He said he loosed them two hounds, and on the hounds tracked you down. Amen. You're having your good time doing your thing. Amen. God found you out, Jack. <laughs> Run you down. Amen. And David knew what done but got loosed on him. <laughs> he said, I can't outrun them dogs. Amen. Let me tell you something. When God gets after you, see, you can't outrun the conviction. Amen. No man can be saved except the spirit draweth. Amen. He loosed them hounds, and you get to figuring, I can't outrun them hounds. Amen. I can outrun another man, but I can't outrun them hounds. Amen. So I'm going to slow them down, and I'm going to give up. Amen. They can take me on back. Amen. I remember I said, I'm going to slow down. Amen. And I'm going to give up. Amen. And I got down on my knees and I said, God, I need to be saved. I need you to cleanse me. Amen. Deliver me. Heal me. Restore me. Amen. The years that the caterpillar, the canker worm, the palmer worm have eaten up, God. Eat my life up. Amen. Why? Because of addiction. Because of pride. Rob me of years. Good years. Young years. Amen. God said, I'm going to give them back to you. You might not be a teenager, but I'll make you camp out with teenagers that's exactly right when I went to church man I told you down there Ocean Island them kids up 2 o'clock in the morning I'm down there trying to get them back in the tent a few years before I'd have been the guy down at the bathroom God to give you them to give it back everything he tried the, the years that the enemies took, back, took away from you and robbed you from life. God said, I'll give them back to you. Amen. He'll give them right back. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. See, y'all done got me all messed up this morning. Here, we better throw this back here. <laughs> remember, I do all my own stunts. <laughs> That's what I remember whenever I... Like, <laughs> Man, I'll be over the speakers in the floor down there. <laughs> Amen. Uh, let us lay aside every weight. I did write a couple things. That, that that clogs your heavenward progress. Amen. That's what the enemy wants to do is put anything and everything on you to slow down your progress from making heaven your home. Amen. That's exactly what he wants to do. <laughs> to beset us, to cleave to us, or to wrap around us. Remember I was talking about that robe they put on and they would walk out there, amen, looking all nice. Amen. But they couldn't run like that. Amen. Listen, I don't care what you try to wrap, get yourself wrapped up in in this world. Amen. You can't run away from God getting tied up in the world. You can't do it. You can't do it. Well, how do you know that, preacher? Support that. Paul wrote to Timothy. He said, any man that warreth entangleth himself not with the affairs of this life. Any man that's being counted on by the heavenly host, any man that's being counted on by the patriarchs and the prophets of old, amen, he said they don't entangle themselves with the affairs of this life. Man, listen, if you want drama, if you want to run your face all the time, listen, everybody say, I ain't got time for that. Y'all remember that black lady? She said, ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. I'm heavenwardly bound. I ain't got no time for no monkey business. Listen, I, I told people before, 
See, when I was young, I had to put up with stupidity. I didn't have no choice. But when I got older, I quit putting up with stupidity because I don't have to put up with stupidity. I choose whether I put up with stupidity or not. When I was a child, I had childish ways. I thought as a child. I acted out as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Amen. That's scripture. Everybody say amen. amen. Grow up and run the race. Don't let everything get in your way and hinder you. I deer hunt. I ride four-wheelers. I, I got a million things I do that I like to do. But when Steve-O said he having a work day, I like to be in West Virginia feeding deer and bear and things like that. But I'm going to come down here and work. Why? Because the house of God has got to be presentable. Amen? That's exactly right. <laughs> We have been made a gazing stock to the world is what Scripture said. They looking at you. They looking at me. They looking at the church house. Amen. Wondering if you really got something that's worth having. Wondering if your God is really the King of kings and Lord of lords. They watching you. The world's watching you. <laughs> Amen. Somebody say, listen, but I'm running a race and I ain't got no sand in my pockets. They ain't nothing going to slow me down, restrict me, stop me, hinder me. Amen. I'm going to be a witness. I'm going to stand for God. I'm going to believe in God. Amen. He said, looking unto Jesus. Amen. You want to figure out who you need to look at? Look at Jesus. Amen. Didn't have no sand in his pockets. Listen. Amen. Pride didn't stop him. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that is made. Amen. The worlds were assembled by him. He died on Calvary's cross. Pride didn't stop him. Amen. His position seated at the right hand of the Father did not stop him. Well, I've got all the clout. I'm the master of the universe. Amen. He did not let his position stop him. Amen? He did not let people stop him. Man, listen, you get to worrying about what, well, they're going to think I'm nuts if I, you know, they know I go to that church. Them people cray-cray down there. They be shouting and screaming and rolling in the floor. I seen the preacher dance one day. <laughs> Don't let people stop you. God done brought you up in here. He tracked you down. Paul was on the street called straight, amen, and God sent a prophet down there to him, amen, listen, God knew where you was at, he knows your address, and you're, you know what, God brought you in here, God put you in here, no, I just decided to be, you ain't decide nothing, God done knocked on your door and told you where you need to go, amen, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher, Amen. We look at Jesus with the understanding of faith. The author, amen, and finisher of what? What did he author and is he the finisher of? Eternal salvation. Amen. He it ain't never been. There has never been, nor will there ever be, a man like the one who came from Galilee. <laughs> Amen. Ain't never been nobody. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Aristotle, amen, and all the great philosophers, amen, ain't never going to outsmart this one man, amen, that came across time and was the pinnacle of all time, amen. I always like that A.D. and B.C. stuff, you know, after death and before Christ and everything. He is the pinnacle of time. All time points to him. Okay. 
He's the author and finisher of our faith, amen. He's the eternal salvation, amen. He's the effective cause, amen, the finisher, amen. He's what makes it effective. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Amen. Listen, why are you going to run around without any sand in your pockets? Amen. Enduring and putting up with it, being talked about being a Christian or whatever, or being looked down upon or being made jokes about. You know, that's that old Jesus freak over there. Oh, yeah, I'm a Jesus freak, right? I mean, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, amen, through all of that, he just he went and laid down his life on the cross. He didn't let nothing hold him back. Nothing restricted him. Nothing stopped him. Amen. From going. He endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Consider him that endured. Amen. See, when he's talking about a race, you look at that. Amen. Two times there, he mentions endurance. Amen. Endure such contradictions of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied in your minds. Amen. For consider him. That, suff- uh, uh, that endured such a contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. Let me tell you something. See, the enemy wants to weigh you down. He wants to weary you in your mind. He wants to cause you to stop. He wants you to cause you to not get involved. He wants to cause you not to go forward. He wants to restrict your advance, amen, as a soldier in the army of God. He wants to stop you. (laughs) But we got to consider, don't let nothing stop you. Don't bend, don't bow, and don't break. Well, we, uh, over there in the book of Daniel, when you hear the music play, you need to uh, 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 bow down to the idol. <laughs> Amen. Listen, I'm going to swing my window open. I'm gonna bow. Daniel said, I'm going to bow three times a day. I'm going to turn my face toward Jerusalem. Amen. And I'm going to honor the Most High God. I'm not bowing down to your music. I'm not bowing down to your image. Amen. But I bow a knee only to the Most High God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> yeah, I had to pick a good time. I need to move over. Let's go to Galatians. And we, we got to go over to this other verse here, man. You know, or we're not going to get there. I had this buddy one time. He was on fire for God, man. I mean, this boy was wide open. All of a sudden, he disappeared. I'm like, man, we in church, we on the front row together, man. We rocking the house. You know what I'm saying? I mean, every service, boy, we pumped up. I mean, we, we like two dogs on the chain. <laughs> I mean, you know, the preacher, I mean, we's like, see, y'all say amen. When we said amen, we were saying sick them. Sick them, preacher. Get them. Preach out. Go ahead, preacher. Preach it again. Come on, preacher. Preach the word of God, son. We was right with him. All of a sudden, my boy disappeared. Disappeared. I ain't been to church in about a month. I'm like, what in the world? See, you got to understand, we up here. Man, we pushing the preacher. We making the preacher preach till he about fall out in the floor. <laughs> I'm betting that's what we did. I mean, we want all you got. Meat, beans, and potatoes. We want everything. So the whole church looking at us two nuts on the front row. Then my boy disappeared. See, he was compassed about by so great a cloud of witnesses. Heaven counting on him. The prophets counting on him. Guess what? There's probably some little old young man back there in the back. Say, man, I wonder what happened to that guy that was on fire up there. Man, where's he at? He was always here. Man, I thought he was really a man of God. You know, when they just wonder and wonder and wonder what happened. You don't want nobody wondering about what happened to you. Wondering about how you lost your position in God. How you lost your position. I ain't talking about no rank and file. Amen. But I'm talking about position. Where you was ordained. Amen. Where you were steadfast. Unmovable. Amen. You was a freight train for God. Uh, You was a John the Baptist in Isaiah chapter 40 where he made the crooked straight. Uh, Amen. He raised the valley up and flattened the mountain and made a king's highway. You was a bulldozer for God. And all of a sudden you ain't in church. Y'all, anybody ever known anybody like that? I'll put it like this. I'll go old school on you. See, 
Some of them just burn like little light, wildfires. A little bit of brush caught on fire, but when it gets over to the real timber, it can't burn and it goes out. John wasn't like that. John knew what the real deal. Let me tell you how I know Ira that John knew the real deal. He said, They come with one after me who's mightier than I am, and he'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. You won't be a little fire, amen, a little wildfire. But, brother, 20 years later, you still got it. 30 years later, you're still anointed. Why? It's because the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. You got something inside of you. Amen. The scripture said, my God is a consuming fire fire when God consumes your life when God consumes your anybody ever know anybody had an addiction that consumed everything they son I've seen people addicts that brother they can run an angle like ain't nobody business I tell somebody amen you watch for this 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 and this they call me two weeks later man you know what I did this or I did I, yeah I told you Son, they'll run an angle so fast, man, because it consumes them. I ought to be flipping over there. Do y'all know in the scripture it talks about addiction? It talks about addiction. It actually says the word addicted. But then they ain't talking about Xanax. It ain't talking about cocaine. It ain't talking about alcohol. He said, I know one of the household of Stephen, and they're addicted to the gospel. It has consumed them. They are addicted to it. It has wholly taken them over. Paul says around 1 Corinthians 13, 14, he said, covet earnestly the best gifts. See, we're supposed to be coveting the things of God, going after, chasing down, running down. Okay, let's get back here. Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 6. Ah, okay. For, for in Jesus Christ, neither he's talking about people of Judaism. He's talking about people, amen, that's Christians that want to pull back into Judaism. You know what I'm saying? They're being swayed. Uh, and he's talking about them pulling back. And listen, for in Christ Jesus there's neither a circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision. Amen. Listen, being circumcised or not circumcised don't make you no better or no worse. That's what he's saying right there. Okay? And that's what he was telling the Gentile Christians and the... Uh, Jewish Christians and the ones that were trying to sway them to go back to Judaism. And he said, man, circumcision don't make you nothing. Uncircumcision don't make you nothing. I don't know what you're thinking, son. He said, but, but faith which worketh by love. Now listen, I'm going to talk. There ain't no external thing going to push you to do something from God see that's what I got out of that they ain't no external thing going to cause you to get on fire for God if an external thing causes you to be on fire for God you will fade out and fall away if you came in here because you counting on mama mama ain't going to get you there you counting on grandma? Grandma ain't going to get you there. Amen? You got to go on your own. Ain't no external thing going to cause you 
to be able to say, there ain't no sand in my pockets. Okay, let's go here. But faith which worketh by love. But you got a faith inside of you that has a relationship with God, and that's going to cause you, amen, to do a work for God. That's going to cause you, amen, to get on fire. I'm talking about something that won't burn out. I'm not talking about Christian today, and we're going to put him up. Uh, so, uh, I'm not talking about, Lord, have mercy. We got in cloth in here. Let's just do this right here. See, because some of them got this right here. Amen. Got this dish rag, God. Amen. They get trouble in their life. Amen. We had to get God to clean it up. Ah, well, it's clean now. We just put God right back up. Amen. They go on living their life. Amen. Everything's good. Amen. Don't I don't need to go to what I need to go to church for. Everything good. All of a sudden, something bad happened again. They gonna run down there to the church house. Hold on. I need some Jesus on this real quick. Amen. Keep God in the broom closet. Get him out when you want to. Amen. And use him and put him back up when we don't need him. Amen. That's what a lot of folks do. Amen. Everything going bad. Listen. Y'all know y'all got them friends on there. I know y'all do. And they'd be having all their liquor bottles, and we partying and everything. And next week, please pray. So and so sick. We had church Sunday. We had church on Wednesday night. Why didn't he said we're two or three gathered together in my name? There I am in the midst of. He said, if you just come on down here and meet up with some folk, you know what? God might do something. Something just might happen. Amen. But, but there's many folk, amen, only when something is wrong do they need God. Let me tell you something. I've been serving God when it was popular. I've been serving God when it wasn't popular. Amen. When everybody liked it and everybody thought we was doing good, I was serving God. Amen. When we was down in the valley, amen, it's hard. Amen. I still kept serving God. Oh, Lord. Ezekiel chapter number 1. Who ever read Ezekiel chapter number 1? Who knows what's in Ezekiel chapter number 1? Talks about an angel having four faces. Lion, ox, a man, and an eagle. I'm eagle kind too. I ain't plucking around them barnyard chickens. You know what I found out about a barnyard chicken? I got some chickens, and they always doing this right here. You know what you see in the, that position? Defeat. No wonder y'all ain't strong Christians. Y'all defeated. No. Angel having four faces. An ox. A man, a lion, and an eagle. Amen. Sometimes you need to have that face of a man and have that heart of love. Sometimes you need to be that eagle. Amen. And baby, to mount up and ride up over the storm. Amen. When all hell assails you and Jesus will not fail you, I shall not be moved. Amen. A lion. Satan walketh about as a roaring lion seek he, seeking whom he may devour. But what he forgot is, I know who the lion of the tribe of Judah is. Amen. I serve under him. Andy, come here. Come on, run. Pretend like you can run. Come on, I will embarrass you. That is my number one goal. Go. 
There's a couple things about the lion. He marks his territory by scratching a tree. Jesus marked his territory by putting a tree in the place of the skull called Golgotha. He said, this is mine. There's one other thing that lion of the tribe of Judah does. When he plays with you, when he shows you his love, he runs into you like that. And the slobber out of his mouth flies out on you. You know what he calls his little kittens? His pride. And when you come to Jesus, he run up to you. Amen. And he put a scent on you. Amen. To let everybody else, every devil in hell, know that they better not touch you. You belong to him. Amen. That's all I need. Brother, I got a scent on me. You can read in the Songs of Solomon. Said, my beloved came to the door and knocked. I was asleep. I came to the door and he had done walked away. But I could smell his fragrance. Hey, Amen. You know what? I want Lucifer to smell. Apollyano better don the king of the bottomless pit. And every imp of hell is the scent of God on you. Somebody say, I ain't got no sand in my pockets. <laughs> ain't no way I can preach normal. I called that old boy up that was on the front row with me. Verse number 7 of chapter number 5. And I said, ye did run well. <laughs> Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Man, you was on fire. You let something distract you, attract you, make you distant. Buddy, get anointed and get back in here. Who did hinder you from doing the work for God? Was it lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God? That's just something that resonated with me yesterday when I was thinking about this. Amen. Amen. Brother, I tell you what, I'll go have all the pleasure in the world. Amen. But there comes times that it's about God. It's about the house of God. It's about the people of God. And I have to stop whatever I'm doing, and I have to do a God thing. And it don't matter. And somebody says, well, you're a full-time preacher. Son, I work 65 hours a week, change clothes on the side of the road with hydraulic fluid all over me to walk into a rest home and preach the everlasting gospel, to lay hands on people that felt like they didn't have no hope and everybody done gave up on them and they didn't have no... Oh. Son, you preaching to the choir. I done been there and done that, son. I'm telling you, real what? You can't say, well, you get paid to do it. Son, I done it when there wasn't a penny there. Amen. I've spent and been spent for the gospel, just like Paul said. I'm telling you. Amen. Anyway. You did run well. Who did hinder you or what hindered you that you should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. It didn't come from any apostolic persuasion. No apostle ever told you you could sit down in this race. No apostle ever told you you could stop, quit, give up, put the... Now, I'm going to get in trouble right here. Is it all right if I get in trouble just a minute? I'm sorry I'm preaching so long. I got saved when I was 24 years old. I'm 54. I rarely ever miss. That ain't just because I'm pastoring. When my pastor used to go out of town, I worked 65 hours a week. You know who run the church? I did. I did. Amen. Why? <clears throat> because it needed to go on. I, I, I ain't never read in the gospel where, well, if you go really good and hard for a little while, we got apartments right over there. You can just sit down. You just pump the brakes a little bit and sit down. I ain't read that yet. I talked to this girl one time. She was a teacher at another church. 
And she said, I'm taking a sabbatical. I'm like, honey, I've been around Baptist and Pentecostal. And we ain't sabbated nothing. <laughs> I can't put God on hold. This is some 10 years later, probably. I think she's still on the sabbatical. Because when you put God up, brother, he going to stay right there. See, God don't push himself on you. He going to stay right there till you go back over there. You can walk a thousand miles away. It's one step back. But you can't put God up. Hold on, hold on. You praying to God for him to move in this urgent. He said, well, I'll put you up. I got tired of listening to you, so I'll come back in about a year or two. Do you want God to put you up? Do you want God to put you off? Do you want God to forget about you? No. But, but we, we're so... In, Entitled that we can put God up. He knows he's going to come when I need him. No, he ain't. No, he ain't. Proverbs chapter 1, he said, You wouldn't hear none of my counsel or none of my reprove. He said, I will mock and laugh at you when your calamity cometh upon you. That's scripture, son. All day long, every day. Ain't got no sand in my pockets. Amen. We got to keep on going for God. All heaven is counting on you. All heaven. We read that. You're compassed about so great a cloud of witnesses. Amen. Somebody sitting in the back is counting on you. Somebody on your job is counting on you. You've been the only Christian in front of them. They counting on you. They're looking at you. They're watching you. Christ in you. The hope of glory. Amen. We ask you to come today. If you got a need, I got a God that's bigger than your need. Amen. God wants to use you. He wants to mold you, mend you. Amen. Into his likeness. He wants you to be able to run with endurance. Amen. We ask you to come in the name of Jesus. God has patiently waited on you to truly give yourself to him. Truly, 100%. He's waited and waited and waited. How long is he going to wait? How long is he going to wait? How long are you going to wait? Are you going to wait until it's too late? And say, well, I went to church sometimes. Well, I went down here, I went over yonder. Man, it's about that personal relationship. It's about you knowing him and him knowing you. It's about that scent of God being on your life. Do you smell like Jesus? Y'all go ahead, man. I'm just, I'm just, y'all go ahead. I'm waiting on y'all.